Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video here. So, this video today is going to be part two of the everything that I've done so far sort of-ish thing. Um, so, real quick, in this video today, uh, you're gonna find that you're, you might hear noises of movement um, or things being shuffled around the background. Uh, it's just gonna be my husband moving things around. Uh, you can see here that uh, our whole, <laughs> Our whole house here is in sort of a disarray as we're like transitioning into the winter months now. Um, the porch that we have here that we stored the majority of his plants uh, isn't insulated whatsoever. So uh, during the winter times, we end up sealing up the, the entryway here as well as the window um, behind my workspace here. Uh, so because of the bad insulation, we usually block those places off and he is currently moving his plants out into the living room right now as we speak. So you're gonna hear him shuffling around. Maybe he's almost done, he says, but uh, you'll also hear a very antsy Poochie walking around behind him and following him in this case. So apologize if it's it comes up a lot on the uh, sound quality here, but it is what it is. We're just gonna crack on and do the best we can for today. So uh, again, forgive me, but if that's not your, if it bothers you, you feel free to uh, just X out of the video. But for now, we're gonna cut right to it and we're gonna pick up, pick up right where we left off the last time. So here we go. So this one here is a graphite drawing. Um, I think this was a, this is something I did for somebody, but they never got back to me about it, I think. Um, but yeah, it was like a, kind of like me getting back to drawing a little bit. I have, I'd like to, like I have recently, like got back into just basic pencil and paper drawing. I'd like to do it because I really, this is where my strengths lie, I think, um, is just like simple drawings. Uh, I really love just the simplicity of it. It's like, now that I go back to it after working on other mediums, it just seems so much more automatic to me is to just sit down and draw. Um, but I love the softness that I was able to get with this. Um, again, this here, it looks like it's on watercolor paper, which isn't ideal for me, but um, with it itself, I liked the softness of it and the way that I was able to actually erase some some uh, some of the surfaces there. Um, but yeah, just a real quick as I zoom up, the lighting itself is kind of messy. Sorry, like the lights are bright, but you can see I was able to put some detail in there. I'm like kind of a sucker for detail when it comes to certain things, but like you can almost see that like the form itself is kind of. Something a little off about the form of the bear. It's almost like it's got a lot of fluff in the back of its head. So I don't know. You can kind of tell it looks a little bit off, but that's whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next one here. So I like to draw a lot of things that are like super cutesy and pretty, but I also like uh, things that are on the side of like combining grotesque with beauty type thing. Um, so for this one here, um, I made this one around the time where I first started or like even mid, I don't know. When I first started trying to do YouTube, I wasn't too successful at it, obviously, but um, but when I made this one, it was the idea of um, almost like fears and like trying to personify uh, almost like an emotion or like, so this one is almost like the idea of shame or um, the idea of, I don't know, it's like embarrassment. So I called this one the shame gremlin because it's like, uh, I was reading uh, and listening to a lot of Brene Brown, and this was, came to mind, I guess, but <laughs> uh, the idea of this little tiny, tiny shame gremlin sitting on your shoulder in a moment of doubt when you think like, oh, this is embarrassing, I put this thing out, I'm sitting in front of a camera, and I'm mumbling, like, it's the idea of this little creature sitting on your shoulder and whispering in your ear these things that are just like not true and negative. So it's like, it's weak and defenseless on its own, but like with grounding and with other sources, it's able to like build its strength, you know what I mean? To kind of grasp your your sense of confidence or your, you know, your self-worth. So it's like almost like personifying this little bitty tiny thing that's like, you know, in a fun way, kind of. So it's like all, always got an, has an eye on you, you know what I mean? Like just fixed. Um, but the drawing itself is charcoal, and it's not something I normally work in, but I absolutely love the quality of it. Um, it's done on the actual piece of drawing paper this time. Um, 
and I'd like to do a lot of more more stuff with it like this in the future, like charcoal itself. But yep, this one's a pretty pretty fun one to do. So this one here is another um, another. I actually think this it's another drawing, but this one was done with ebony pencil. So it's a very very dark pencil, very smooth, very nice to draw with. The only drawback when it comes to it is like when light reflects onto it. There's like a a luster in a sheen and so it makes it really really hard to see with the light but the idea behind it was um you know almost like an environmentalist uh type i don't know type of theme where it's like you know the last bear in captivity in the future or whatever you know something something extreme but um the idea of just i don't know i was thinking about it like Especially lately, I always have the idea of environment on my mind, obviously, as like a lot of people do. But like even before the <laughs> all the gloom and doom started, like I just kind of did Even before all the gloom and doom, I just kind of had like growing up just this sense of like really enjoying nature. Um, you know, bouncing between living in like a cul-de-sac environment where it's just like cut and paste houses and then you know, eventually transitioning and growing up at my aunt's house where it was just all woods. It's like a whole different world. Um, yeah, I think that's where I got most of my um, interest in nature is just by living, um, growing up and being able to visit certain places, but um, also like having a forest near me at like an important part of my life. Um, so yeah, it's a kind of a little, kind of a sad note for this one, but you know, I really liked the way it turned out. I thought it was pretty neat. So this one, um, this one was made, it's a pretty large one too. Um, this one was made with a lot of scraps that I had left over from art school. And I ended up using as much as I could from the scraps. And then with it, I ended up piecing together uh, sort of like an illustrated style of, you know, sort of the idea of Aladdin. Again, it goes back to like how I like to illustrate in a weird way or in a weird style. Like I like to go through and illustrate certain stories. So it's like the idea here is Aladdin. Um, I don't know if I need to explain, uh, Aladdin or Aladdin or even just the original story isn't even about it, but like my most familiar story is Disney. So like, that's why I call him Aladdin. Um, the idea is just basically, uh, grant, or just first rubbing the lamp, like finding it in rummage garbage. Uh, it's almost like a modern take in some ways, cause like an American modern, I guess, cause it's like a, or Western culture. Um, cause it's more like the city with like, I don't know, skyscraper almost, but, um, it's just like him being in the street urchin. The idea is like, you can look at the the character itself. It's like made of like weird stacks of either rock or compacted garbage almost. And so you can tell that like, let me show here real quick. You can tell that it's like grimy and dirty. It's like running, almost like running collected sewage and water to put together. And it's like a dwelling almost too, you can see. Um, I really like the way that this one turned out. I might do something with it maybe. Um, because, I don't know, to me, it's just really interesting and different. So, I, I don't know, I kind of like it. I love the idea of just kind of, like, piecing together scraps and recycling things. Because I don't, as, like, just a personality trait for me, I don't like wasting things. So, like, if I have something that's sitting around, I like to just collage it together, you know what I mean? And just kind of see what I can come up with. Or, I don't know, make it more interesting than it was, I guess, like, as it was by itself. But... Yeah, I won't dwell too long, but um, I really like the way that this one turned out and a lot of the different aspects of it. It's just like, you could tell that I wasn't really like too concerned, which is rare, with the way that it was looking because it was a recycled project and I wasn't able to hold back. And for some reason, when that happens, I really like the way it looks, which is strange. <laughs> so next up here is something that I kept since I was in uh, college. It is a woodblock print, and it's kind of a, a lot of the, a lot of what I was doing in school was just kind of like, I don't know, trying to take, because it was like a fine arts program, so I was like trying to take like, take it pretty seriously when I could, 
but also kind of like add a little bit of personality to it a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the, what I did in school was just kind of like take the best or take the skills that I already had and just kind of do the best I could with them. So, uh, the print process itself with like etching and woodblock prints, uh, it's, it was all new to me, uh, at the time. And I only ever did like a handful of projects, but even though I like took a couple of print classes, um, I did, I would say that, uh, my print classes with my instructor that I had, uh, the couple instructors that I had really kind of like, uh, opened the doors for me for like the enthusiasm behind, uh, trying to, I think some of the best instructors that I had were, uh, my print instructors at the time. Um, but I had the most fun in those classes, but I won't dive too much deep into that. Um, but as you can see, this project here is just kind of a fun, like traditional, uh, sort of woodblock print here, which I just kind of hung on to and kind of enjoy. Um, but yeah, there's really not much to say about this one, so we'll just move on. So around the time that I was in community college, um, it was my first introduction to Scratchboard, I think. Um, so it was, uh, Scratchboard is basically that piece of masonite that is, um, has like a ink overlay to it. And so you take your uh, utensil and you scratch off the surface. Uh, I've done a couple of others before and I even made a couple of videos, which I can probably insert the links to here. But um, this character here is actually from uh, Guild Wars 2. It's kind of like a, a fan art piece that I did at the time. Um, I never played it as much even back then. Like I I'm still play the game very casually, but I do find that the artwork in this game and uh, as with like a lot of other games, are it's just so beautiful. I even ended up uh, getting one of the their art books recently just because I love the style of the, the way that they do their landscapes and their um, character art. But um, this one's a fun little one here, but um, it's basically like a little char with this great sword. Um, but yeah, I just like the, I always, I always love the quality of Scratchboard and it's probably something I'll keep continuing to do in the future. But yep, yeah, there's that one right here. We'll move on real quick. So this next one is a, one of the Scratchboard projects I was talking about before. Um, I made a video dedicated to this one. Uh, it's kind of like some of my favorite things to do is kind of take a subject in itself. It's probably not even in frame here. Um, one of my favorite things to do is take a subject in itself and add like really harsh like tones to it or even like some geometry to kind of add some of the dimension. Um, but overall, I think the most endearing quality to me about Scratchboard is just the cleanness of the line you're able to get um just because it's like it's such a, like a gritty material that like it's really toothy and it gives you a lot of grip so like you have a lot of control over the line and it's just such a smooth surface that it shines through so nicely um but yeah this one was like a, a seahorse with some geometry added to it here's another one um it is the other scratchboard project that i'd done uh it is a hammerhead shark, um, and the idea with this one is just kind of um, exaggerated as abstraction to kind of make it seem like it's a, <laughs> a hammerhead breaking through glass or, or like a surface and just kind of like breaking through. Um, the texture in the background is just, uh, it's just basically like a reef type idea. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll zoom in for this one here just to see like the overall quality of the uh, etching itself. So you can see here like a little bit closely, um, a little better, is that the quality of the line is just so exact. I love, like if you look in on even just the teeth, it just like allowing more control over the values that you have when it comes to etching or cross etching. Um, I just really, I just really love the quality of it. <laughs> so these here, I'll just show as like a couple. Um, they're like, rare projects that I've had from the one photography class that I took in at university. Uh, I had a lot of fun um, in the class itself with experimentation, but I also think that I struggled the most in this class. Um, a lot of the problem that I faced at school was the kind of like the financial aspect of it. Um, I was really, really lucky to be able to attend, but like Beyond that, I didn't have um, money for materials, especially around this time. And it kind of showed through, like it was kind of, 
like in terms of being like professional at school, it was very irresponsible of me to keep continuing, even though I didn't have the means of like paying for supplies. Um, but I remember for this class in, its, in itself, like I had a couple of instructors that were like so gracious and were able to help me cover the cost of like the film that I used for these projects. Um, so I'm really thankful for that. But the projects itself that I came up with um, are kind of nice. I like the concept of them. Like I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure if there's any like photographers here who see them, they're probably looking at this like this is really horrible. But I don't know. I kind of like the... Uh, Again, like the collaging quality of uh, putting things together. So I don't know. I just thought that this one was pretty cool. I like the idea of just paper meets ink meets photography, even though it's probably not anything great. But um, and then this one itself is like basically taking the negatives and then developing the cuts of them and then just kind of like developing them as they're like collaged together. So I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing. But yeah, they're like some of my... <laughs> These are some of my very rare projects when it comes to photography. The only things that I really have to show for it. <laughs> so this one here is another attempt at um, digital print in one of my classes. Uh, again, I just took like bits and pieces of different things. Um, there was a picture that a roommate had taken of me. Um, I scanned uh, my hat at the time that I, I think I received from a friend. Uh, took uh, some leaves that I took pictures of and basically just like repeated. Um, I made an attempt. I think at the time um, I didn't really know about like things like Wacom tablets or anything, which is funny, which because it was not that long ago. Again, I grew up very sheltered. Um, <laughs> I had no idea about Wacom tablets or anything. So I would sit there and I'd question like, how the heck are people able to... Um, draw the way they do digitally like how are they able to come up with certain things and I was literally using a mouse while I was trying to draw this and at school even because I just never even like thought about hey you know maybe I should ask somebody like how do you do that <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you can see here it's just like a watercolor um, with gouache butterfly that I had done the swallowtail and then literally like a picture of some blueberries or grapes that I took and then just some colored in um, birds that are just like inverted and then paste. Again, it's like nothing groundbreaking, but I remember being really proud of it at the time because it was just so something new and cool and exciting that I'd never tried before. But um, yeah, I just hung on to this and figured I'd use it as like a reference of where I've been and where I've started. So I like this project here. Um, this is where I really started tuning in to my love of nature. Um, I had like this really honed in idea, like it was automatic when I first, we went to this site. Um, my instructor ended up taking a few of us who signed up to go with them to, on this trip to see these, uh, these rare um, type of plants that grow only in this one part of the state. Um, but I remember when I first got there, it was like rainy, it was wet, it was gray, kind of like a day today where it's just been rainy and gray. Um, and it was cold. So it was like, I started finding a bunch of fungus and like lichen and all this other, these other little, um, objects there. And so it was just like really, really cool to just go through and take textures and just pull from them and then just add like oh, this is the fungus that I found right there. And then, like, the idea for this next one was, like, the the type that I found on the trees. And then just, like, that cascading idea of, like, you're looking up and it's just, you know what I mean? Um, just this automatic idea of just placing them and just documenting where I found them and, like, how they were. So it was just, to me at the time, it was just really interesting. But, like, in itself, just to look at these, like, the pops of color... And then just the the variation and like the the saturation to me, I don't know something about it just stands out. I don't know why, but I just thought it was really interesting. So again, these aren't in chronological order, but um, these are the projects I was referring to just a little bit ago. Um, this is the one here that I did of uh, the female there with just basically again taking bits and pieces of just automatic things and adding it to it. Um, again, like this one isn't 
nearly as nice as the original that I made all those years ago, but it still kind of has that like colorful feel to it. But in itself, it was just meant to kind of get me back into the mode of just, you know, working that day. So I thought it was pretty nice for what it was. And then this one here is the original of the, um, the dog you seen earlier. I used my, my dog Romeo as the reference and called this one Sylvan Hound. Um, I really liked how it turned out and I'm kind of very partial to it just because it's my, it's my baby that I illustrated. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, like kind of an earthly, um, earthly color tone palette to it. I didn't really, um, I didn't really obsess a lot over it. Like it was just kind of an automatic thing. It was very fun. I loved how it turned out, but, um, always where it comes to my favorite parts of things is like the deep saturations of the brown that meet like other colors here um but yeah you can see just kind of like some of the detail in there yeah i thought it was kind of nice i like this for this next one it is the it's a larger one it's 18 by 24 um again it is a cutout type uh a cutout type work where I ended up taking bits and pieces of like cardstock, things I've painted, um, even some like excess scrap that I've been holding on to just to kind of recycle again. A lot of what I do is like I take bits and pieces that I've had before of different pieces of paper and to kind of like piece together a lot of what I do. Sometimes I even just take that piece and after making something and then I'll just kind of like piece it there and be like so how does this fit in relation to what I'm trying to do? Um, it doesn't always work that way. Like a lot of it's, it's a lot of like play, which I like. Um, I think that's a lot of it too, of what I, how I like to structure these collages is like, how can I play with it as much as possible? Um, but again, uh, this one is just kind of like a colorful, uh, I forgot to say it, it's titled Queen Bee. Um, it's, as you can see, it's like almost like that beehive hairstyle. Um, but also you can see like the queen larva there. Um, and just kind of like a very vibrant, it's very automatic piece and texture and, um, just some play. So this next one is another like fan art type thing. Um, I made this one for Tyler. Uh, he played a lot of Smite at the time and it's a game about, um, a bunch of DDs kind of coming together and playing like a, um, what type of game? style is it uh it's like a MOBA style game um but in this one it, I, he really liked the character Ra um which is like a mage character and then for the skin itself in the game they made like an eldritch like uh Cthulhu type skin which is really neat um so I figured it would be kind of like a nice little addition to the living room at the time um so I just kind of held on to it we, it doesn't really it ended up uh <laughs> the frame that we had ended up breaking recently so we just I just figured I'd take it and then throw it into a portfolio since we switched it out anyway but you can see here some of the detail um a lot of what i do is which is pretty recent for my workload is just i have a lot of like splashes of color and texture which isn't something that i used to do um but i've become more experimental lately but yeah it's the same old same old of the watercolor with my cron pen and um this one's a little more contained, I would say, in terms of like the color palette. Um, the initial idea was try to make it as purpley as possible, being that it's like that Cthulhu-like idea. But I just thought it was really neat. Um, but really not much else to say about it, so we'll move on real quick. Hey y'all, this is Editing Derek in the future here. Uh, turns out we have enough footage for just one more video. Uh, so with a lot of the projects that I work on, there's a lot of thought that goes into them, so there was a lot to talk about in each of these, so um, so if you made it this far in the video, I thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate your support. If you like what I do and you like the style in which I work in, give it the video a thumbs up. I'll definitely be sure to work on the pacing of each of these videos, but for now, I've gone on long enough, so I appreciate your time. I thank you for watching, and another one will be out soon. So thanks. I'll see you.